What was fashion like for you when you first came out? Niggas was dirty as fuck. Like, uh, you know what? You know what's crazy? Shit. Niggas is still dirty, dirty bitch. Dirty, dirty word. <laughs> <laughs> We doing, mm -hmm. Mr. Badass. Mr. Son. Peace, peace. Hey, I'm good, beloved. What's happening? Yeah, you know, just checking out these fabrics or whatever. There's a lot of stuff. Fabrics. I see that. But fabulous. <laughs> Hello. How are you guys doing today? We are good. How are you? Good. Sir? Good. My name's Jose. Welcome to Hyven Colony. We're gonna be working on designing your suits. I like this green. It's like a green. Hello. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's making me feel real Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Yeah. What was fashion like for you when you first came out? Honestly, for me, I was never really into fashion. We came after an uh, era where it was a lot of suit wearing. Honestly, people that was on the block, you know that, didn't dress like that. Yeah. Everybody didn't dress like that. I mean, if you was getting money like that, absolutely. But the majority of the people dress like he was going to war. I guess the more rugged you looked, the, the better off you was, and uh, it was cheap. How would you describe your style at the time, like, mm. like going back to the METH video shoot and all that? Because you had the eye contact, you know, yeah. like, you know, like what, what, what was going through your mind at that time? I was still building off the Wu-Tang chamber we was coming out of, uh, and Wu-Tang was still going and going strong. But now it was like my solo look. And one word to describe it is grimy. Man. To be ready for war. You know, all the time, and all the time. Well, a lot of times dudes wore Tim's either, they expected, they, they either had a warrant and they was expecting to go to jail. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you don't want to go in jail with your best shit on because uh, they're going to take you. That was the room, they're going to take uh, your shit. So it was Tim's. It was <laughs> Tim's and fatigues. <laughs> Tim's and fatigues. Do you guys want to design your own suits? Sounds uh, like, a, yeah. like yeah. a plan. So uh, we could look at some of the fabrics that we have. I need something that complements my Godiva chocolate skin. You know what I'm saying? See, so there's definitely a lot of fabric options. I feel like this right here kind of go with the bracelet. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah, 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 right there. <laughs> well, as far as these fabrics, I'm pretty open to whatever you guys think yeah, with it, you know. And then I could show you guys um, some of the design options that we have for right. jackets. How did you use fashion to elevate your career? To me, there's two things, right? You got fashion and you got style. I always feel like fashion is something that you buy. Like, you can go to the store and you can purchase fashion. Okay. But style is something that, like, that's inside. Inside, that's inside. part of, like, personality. Mm. So I would say, like, you know, stylistically, style goes hand in hand with just my artistic expression. How would you describe your style and, um, who are some of your influences? Definitely, I say the Wu. When it comes to that raw, rugged aspect, like just old New York is definitely a big part of my stylistic influence. You know mm. what I'm saying? I still like to put on that raw, rugged. Put that on. Mm. Why don't we get ready to measure you guys to get these suits? All right. You guys. You first, though. You lead the way. Okay. I'll lead the way. You think they'll make me an old fashioned son, I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Yo, this water hitting. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna get you started with uh, fitting. So I'm gonna start with the shoulders, arms, and chest. Oh, okay? we got enough tape for that. Uh, yes. <laughs> so shoulders we'll broader the shoulders. than broader way, B. Right. Broader than broad way. Nice. What's that, about 100? Uh, 19 and a half. <laughs> 19 and a half, son. Hey, man, how did growing up in Staten Island influence your taste in music, and who was your biggest influences at the time? Ooh, so back in the day when I was introduced to hip hop, it was a uh, Sugar Hill Gang. I was lucky enough that uh, when I moved from Long Island back to Staten Island to hang out with dudes that loved hip hop as much as I did. But not only did they love it, they was writing their own rhymes. These guys was good. I'm talking about Chef, Kappa, and a few others that didn't make it to where we at right now, you know? About my first year of high school, LL Cool J dropped his first album, I Can't Live Without My Radio. I was, what, 16, 17 years old? We idolized Todd. To this day, that's like my spirit animal. You know what I mean? LL Cool J, shout to him. But major influence on my rap style, everything. My first rhyme I wrote was in his style. 
Mm. You know. And what was it like for you going from being in a group to being a solo artist? Well, I mean, we all started out that way, honestly. We was just dudes that liked to rhyme on the block. It was never like any really, any type of real, you know, you had your different rap crews and things like that, and dudes had their routines, but with us, it was a little bit different because everybody had their own rhymes. How do you continue to like the elevate and push yourself to the next level? Um, I know my only competition is me. What I mean by that is I ran into Sean P. People that ain't familiar with Sean P. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Dug down Brooklyn's finest. There was a time in hip hop where a lot of the people that came in my era, we went on a, not a self hiatus, more like an industry hiatus because we were being pushed out, I guess, or the music genre was changing. And I remember listening to this kid, Sean P. And I'm like, this dude is nasty right here. I became one of his biggest fans. So when I ran into him, I had to ask him, like, I'm trying to talk to him and tell him, like, you hit like this, this pen renaissance. Like, how'd your pen get so crazy? And he looked at me, you know, Sean P. He looked at me, he's like, I'm better than niggas. That's what <laughs> 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 Like, yeah, yeah. Classic, Sean. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense right there. So that's how I approach it now, like, better than niggas. Right. With everything. That's how I gotta approach every act, not not just with the pen, but every aspect of life. I'm better than niggas. What? For real. What? Niggas, you know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't got the same symphony of thoughts, B. At all. So when you were creative and you have room with an empty canvas and you have room to create, whatever your vision is, man, it's gonna translate right there on that motherfucking canvas. Right. Please believe it. How right. do you feel like the shoulders fit you? Pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's comfortable. My arms long uh, enough, somebody, B. Yeah. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah, his arms are pretty pretty long now. Do you want to just swap places now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Said it's my turn. I know you uploaded a video of yourself freestyling on YouTube when you first started. Did it make it easier for you to tap into the music industry? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I use social media, YouTube being the platform at the time as my end. It's crazy because one day I just kind of had the vision. Like I was coming home from school and it just dawned on me. I'm like, yo, I'm nice. That's one. Mm. Number two, all I got to do is show the world that I'm nice, right? Like it's one thing to do it with just putting songs out on YouTube and hoping people discover your shit. But I'm like, nah, I need like a real freestyle moment. My vision was I'm going to send it to World Star and they're going to put it up. They ain't never posted me at that time. So I'm like, all right. You know what, I'm gonna just put it on YouTube, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do like a little marketing ploy on the title. So I, I uploaded it, and the title that I put was 15-year-old freestyles for world star hip hop. And my first manager, he discovered it, and one morning I was going to school, I got a direct message. For, what he said in the message was like, yo, I just saw your video on world star hip hop. I was like, wow. Look at God, the shit worked. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm laughing internally because I'm like, he didn't even see it on World Star. He just thought he did because of the psychology wow. that I put on the wow. video. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Take so notes, man. Go I ahead, bro. I feel brother. like, you know, social media still continues to propel my career. With us, it was luck of the draw a lot. You had to really put yourself out there, put the work in, run out there, sit in front of record labels. You guys took that and put the power back into the hands of the creators. Right. Through social media, which is fantastic. My advice to young artists now is, out the gate, show people versatility. That way they don't never try to put a cage around who you are and what you can express. Salute. How did you feel with the jacket? Was it comfortable? It was good. I just think the arms was too short to box the guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll go ahead and, you know, work on the jacket and you guys could go and have a drink. How did you first get into acting? What made you want to act? Man, I mean, it kind of fell in my lap at first. The first thing I ever did was uh, a small part in uh, a movie called Great White Hype. Hudlin Brothers, Sam Jackson, Peter Berg, Jamie Foxx, Damon Wayans. Great company. Uh, from there, I got a call to do 187. After that, it was uh, an audition. I went on an audition, and I remember the first time I went in the audition, I didn't get it. 
I got a note from my agent at the time, go in with you, bring the pain stuff on, bring the fangs, bring the eyeball, the whole shebang. So I go in and I do my whole spiel and I got the part in a movie called Copland, which was Peter Berg, Sylvester Stallone, Harvey Keitel, so on and so forth. And these joints was both before Belly? Both before Belly, oh, yes, sir. Man. And, um, but I still hadn't gotten the acting bug. Uh, Hype Williams was doing a movie and uh, he called me in to do it. Uh, called in Nas. Dolly State to State. That's when I got the bug. So I got to ask you now, how did you get into the acting thing? One of my greatest inspirations growing up was Will Smith. Nice. Tupac. Mm. And, you know, music was always my first love. Like, music was that thing that spoke to me. When I was making that transition from junior high school to high school, I realized that at the time, there wasn't any programs that was going to help me enhance my music career, or like, you know, rapping, or yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So I'm like, all right, you know, what's, what's the next thing that I would love to do? And it immediately dawned on me, was like, acting. You know what I'm saying? So I applied acting. for schools. Yeah, so I applied for schools like LaGuardia, mm. PPAS. And I ended up getting accepted into Edward R. Murrow's screen theater program as a right. theater student. Getting accepted into there, like I still hadn't caught the acting bug yet because for me, it was a culture shock. It was my first time going to school with white people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and being in the theater class, it was like I was one of three black kids in that theater class. So it was all new for me. And honestly, it was very uncomfortable. It definitely wasn't anything that made me feel like this is what I want to do. But I learned quickly that how difficult it was to make it mm. as an actor, especially mm. growing up in You were aware city. of that back then. Right, right. like right. I learned gotcha. quickly because, you know, I'm in class with, with all of these kids who've been doing this shit since they was in elementary school. Right. Like, they've been in the arts program. And they, but they're in that class with you now, so they ain't really did. And they was advanced, you know what right. I'm saying? Gotcha. I was learning, I was literally at the bottom of my class. Wow. Literally at the bottom. Long story short, I ended up getting kicked out because my... <laughs> nah, don't long story short yeah. us. Wait a minute, <laughs> hold up. Let's rewind. My G got kicked out. All yeah, right. Because, you know, I got to high school and then I met all my, like, I met Steez, rest in peace. Mm, CJ, all your yeah, all, yeah, all, yeah, all yeah, the yeah, forever yeah, homies. Yeah. And, you know, music was something that was still so, so fiery in my spirit. When I met them, I'm like, I bet, like, shit, I didn't even know that I was going to come here and meet cats that could rap. Dope. So, you know, that turned into. <laughs> Me cutting class to be, you know, with the bros and stuff like yeah. that. So we could rap and we could sharpen our skills with each other. And that broke, I was already at the bottom of the class, but that brought me to the negative bottom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what brought and, you back, though? Well, what brought me back is, so the moment I got kicked out, I was like, okay, a lot of stuff that was required to be in the theater, theater program was theater, theater yeah. musicals, you had to do ballet, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff. And I, I wasn't really too enthused. Like, I just wanted to act. Like, I wanted yeah, to do work. You know what I'm saying? Real type of acting scenario, situations type of thing. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just double down on the music for now and I'm gonna use music as a leverage later. I was like, you know, it'll be better if I come with something to bring to the table that way people would actually wanna cast me. And once they find out that I can actually act, it's only gonna be a win-win. And you know, the first role, shout out to Sam Esmail. Rami Malik, Christian Slater, because the first film I landed was in a show called Mr. Robot. And mm. that was an ill, ill first role. What's your preparation process like? Like, you know, when you get a role and you preparing to go in, or let's say you already booked it, mm -hmm. and you know, you preparing to go deliver the, you know what I'm saying, well, your scenes. Well, first thing I do is get a good nice rest because I want to show up on time. Right. Okay. Well, um, that's the difference between me and you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that young energy. You, you'll figure it out sooner or later, brother. Trust. As soon as I get a script, I'm going over it. I want to know what it looks like, what it feels like. And the process for me is, okay, after I read it, how would I react to this in the real world? Right. I'd probably be this way with it. Okay, well, the words are saying this, but how would I actually say it? Mm -hmm. That's big for me. You know what I mean? Well. So that's basically the process for me. Learn yeah. your lines. If you got to go there, go there, whatever that is. I don't need to do that shit. I have so much life experience, PTSD from living in the situations right. I've lived for the majority of my life. It doesn't take me long. Right. Put to me in a situation. In yeah. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. that's it. I mean, what, what, what's your process like? My process is very similar. Like, I, I would say, I would classify yours as instinctual, mm. which is like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, 
I gotta see what the environment feels like. Like, I read the script, I, 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 I read my lines, you know what I mean? And then after that, what I like to memorize most over lines is the energy. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, what's actually being done in this scene? Mm -hmm. Like, what's the goal? How am I feeling? How am I making the other person feel? I put that over words because sometimes, like you said, like the words will limit you. But you know That's how it is. That's a beautiful thing. You, you know how it is, though. Like, well, Davis McLean got way more monologues than Unique. <laughs> so it's different. It's like, I'm like, it requires way more than Definitely what it is for me. Like, Well, I think we both do the same thing, but when we have an objective, the same way in life, you're going to fight for that with all your being. Whether you're in a scene and your objective is to win an argument, Absolutely. you're going to do everything in your power to win that argument to get your point across. Whether it's life, you just want to win in life and be happy, you're going to fight for that happiness. And there that's, it is. That's a fact. Yo, I met the man. And Thank I'm Joey you. Badass, you heard? <laughs> yeah. Yo, this, this, this was pretty dope right here. This was fly, B. Fly, yeah. This was a real luxurious experience, man. Hell Shout yeah. out to Jose in the back fixing Jose, the old fashion. My boy Zay. I got to say thank you for your time, man. This thank was a pleasure and an honor. Absolutely. For real. Yes, for real. Yes, yes. Sir.